despite War Thunder having close to 2,000 vehicles within it, there are several types that have been missed off for one reason or another, which is a huge shame. Some of these are a little understandable, whereas others definitely deserve a spot within this game. In this video we are going to be looking at some of the planes that I would like to see added from what I consider to be the golden age of aviation. Now obviously as you could probably tell from the intro I have a bit of a thing for American planes and to be honest American planes are probably the one despite having the biggest air tech tree at the moment still being the one that has the most aircraft missed off such as this the XP-75 Eagle. This was a second world war fighter interceptor where 14 were actually built but none saw service. It was armed with 10 50 caliber machine guns and featured a very unusual contra rotating propeller and an engine mounted behind the pilot much like you see in the Aero Cobra and King Cobra. There is really no reason that this aircraft shouldn't be in the game. It would make a very good premium aircraft, event aircraft or battle pass aircraft, any of the three will do. It is quite a competent all round vehicle that would suit the battle rating of 5.0 or around that number. The B-45 Tornado is probably the vehicle on this list I want to see added the most because it was used in decently large numbers, 143 were built, it was used by the US Air Force being their first jet bomber, this was America's first jet bomber so a pretty important aircraft to not add to the game and I understand Gaijin being a little bit sceptical about adding heavy jet bombers to the game because they would be difficult to balance but this is not a heavy jet bomber, this would be very similar in performance to the IL-28 which we already have in game and the B-57 Canberra which America already has in game. This plane was actually used by the Royal Air Force uh, although technically undercover this has a fairly conventional, sizable bomb load, a fairly respectable speed, and it would perfectly fit the battle rating of 7.7 .7 or 8.0. It is an adequate all-round bomber that really sees, once again, no reason to not be added to the game already. The B-47 was the predecessor and the basis for the legendary B-52 Stratofortress. Now this is approaching heavy jet bomber territory but not quite being there with a payload exceeding 20,000 pounds of bombs which is among the highest numbers in game at the moment and with a speed around 600 miles an hour this would be a force to be reckoned with. Unfortunately with the game balance and the missile spam that starts to occur around the battle rating of 9.0 which is where I would start seeing this aircraft, uh, I would say 8.7 personally, it would be a difficult one to bring to the game and this is the problem where Gaijin has with struggling to manage adding new heavy bombers to the game especially at higher tiers but the B-47 would be perhaps the limit of what we would go into. I would like to see the B-52 added to the game and for that matter planes like the YB-60 but it is unlikely. At the very least we may get the B-47 Stratojet. This is another very important aircraft. It does have some guns. It has a tail gunner 
So there's that. It's not going to be totally defenseless. And it is a very important aircraft nonetheless. The B-50 Super Fortress was, as the name implies, a further upgraded version of the B-29, featuring bigger engines with more power, more speed, more range, as well as a more durable airframe, a higher tail, and hard points for external fuel tanks or external bomb racks, increasing the overall bomb capacity all the way up to 28,000 pounds, which is quite absurd. It retains the same excellent guns of the B-29 and was once again an important aircraft in the US Air Force. Despite being only an interim design, a stopgap development while more powerful and newer jet aircraft were being made in the early 1950s, this plane would go on to be pretty impressive. First of all, it was a large contributor to the supersonic program being a mothership for the Bell X-1, as well as being the first plane to fly non-stop around the world, which a lot of people don't realize. Oh, and while we're at it, talking about the B-50, go ahead and add its uh, proposed design variant, the B-54, which was effectively the ultimate super fortress with a top speed of 430 miles an hour, and 14 50 caliber machine guns, which is a little bit more than the standard B-29 and B-50, and a payload of 36,000 pounds of bombs. Ah yes, the B-36 Peacemaker. This one is quite high on the list of many people doing similar videos to my own, but it might be a little unrealistic. In order to add the mighty B-36, War Thunder may have to reevaluate how its higher tier air battles are going to work, and I mean either bigger games, bigger uh, maps, new game modes, or just more healthier targets for such a large plane, and this is a large plane indeed. This plane, in fact, has the longest wingspan of any combat aircraft ever built, and it has a payload in the 80,000s of pounds, which is quite a lot of bombs. That is more than even the B-52, and for reference, it is worth about four times that of the B-29 Super Fortress. This plane does actually have some defensive armaments, so again, wouldn't be too defenseless. And if War Thunder actually decides to increase the durability of its aircraft, especially the bombers, then this thing is going to be a force to be reckoned with around the battle rating of 8.0, which is where I believe that such an aircraft should fit into the game. Like I said, a lot of re-evaluating is going to have to take place, but it's better to try and do such a thing, at least experiment with it, rather than just leave out such an iconic and comically large aircraft from the game altogether. Otherwise, that would be a huge shame. There are multiple variants of the Peacemaker. There is one with the extra four jet engines mounted on the wings, and there is obviously the early versions without such a thing featured. So there you go, there is room for all sorts of growth and multiple variants of this aircraft being added to the game and thus eventually reaching the YB-60 which would make an interesting maybe event vehicle considering it was only a prototype. There are several other aircraft I wanted to talk about for the Americans but for the sake of video length I will shorten it down to just speed running so I'm not going into too much detail about all of them. These include the XF-85 Goblin, a tiny little parasite fighter designed to be launched from planes like the Peacemaker or the B-29, the F-102 Delta Dagger, the F-106 Delta Dart, the F-94 Starfire, the F-86D Sabre Dog, the F-101 Voodoo, and the Lockheed XF-90 for the US Air Force. For the US Navy, the F-1H Phantom, the FJ-1 Fury, the Ryan Fireball, the F-6U Pirate, and the F-7U Cutlass. And might I add, there are several more aircraft that I will be mentioning if we decide to do a part two to this video. But let's have a look at some aircraft ideas for other nations. It would only make sense to give other nations jet bombers, like the Vickers Valiant for Britain. 
Now, Britain already has two Canberra bombers, which are, you know, very iconic aircraft for the Royal Air Force. They are a very instrumental jet bomber. But I think what is at the top of a lot of people's list are the V bombers, such as the Valiant. The Valiant is probably going to be the easiest one to add because, well, it's technically the worst of the three. It's the slowest, it carries the smallest payload, and would not be uh, super duper way out of reach from this list that are similar in performance, then I don't see why not. Another aircraft I wanted to talk about was the Supermarine Spiteful, basically the ultimate version of the Spitfire, slightly even further ahead than the Spitfire Mark 24, which is the current ultimate version of the Spitfire. The Spiteful and its naval counterpart with the contra-rotating propeller, the Sea Fang, would make very good additions for the top ranks of the British Air Tree, at least re with regards to the uh, propeller section. So these could be very high ranking or high battle rating rank 4 aircraft or perhaps the first tech tree rank 5 piston engined aircraft. For the Russians, it would also make sense giving them more heavier jet bombers because the IL-28 and the Tu-14 just aren't really heavy bombers at all. In fact, they barely qualify as medium jet bombers. The Tu-16 is basically going to be the answer to the B-47. It's technically not quite as good, but they've got to have something before they get to the bigger stuff, and this would be the perfect choice. It is similar in performance, and there is a Chinese variant which you could also give to the Chinese trees, so these would sit nicely around the battle rating of, say, 8.7, for example. These would fit perfectly into the game. Several were built, several were used in service, so it would only make sense to add the next logical step in evolution for Russian jet bombers. Now this next one might be a little bit more controversial. This is the LA-160, and I say it's controversial because this one only existed in prototype form. It was basically a stopgap development after World War II, while Russia was basically scrambling to come up with new jet ideas after capturing several of the German examples, this was one of the things that they came up with on the route to the LA-15, which we have in-game. This is going to sit around rank 5, probably the battle rating of 7.7, maybe even 7.3. Effectively, it's just a slightly worse LA-15. But I like the sort of crude early attempts of jet fighters. There are several examples which never quite reach the full, fully built, fully flown examples like this one here. For the German tech tree that I want to talk about, but that's arguably pushing the limits of fiction, whereas this one is not. If you can have the SU-9 and the SU-11, planes which both have broken stats are completely made up, then you can definitely have the LA-160. Speaking of planes that push fiction, this is the ME262 Hochgeschwindigkeit 3, or just any of the HG versions of the ME262. There are three of them. All three were basically high speed, further planned developments of the legendary ME262 that we already have in game. Now, the 3 version, this is the one that you see here, is definitely more resembling the Swallow, which the ME262 was named after. Uh, the Swallow is in the bird, anyways. Now, this would be a fast, high-speed, high-powered jet version of the ME262, sitting around the battery rating of maybe 9.0 or just shy of 9.0, rather than 7.7 .7 or wherever the current ME262 is sitting. It has more powerful 30mm guns, it has better speed, better acceleration, just better everything. But unfortunately, none actually existed in physical form. It was only drawn in blueprint form, which is quite a shame. So if you want this vehicle at the moment, you currently have to play World of Warplanes, and I understand not many people fancy doing that. But until then, I am all happy with having paper vehicles added to War Thunder because it adds a whole wave of interesting things and it means that multiple nations would get planes and other vehicles in every update rather than just one, say, copy-paste vehicle at top tier and that's all you're getting for your update. That's, you know, I think sort of, this sort of thing would definitely fix War Thunder's lack of vehicle problem. The only problem is 
that some players do not like this sort of thing. I don't know why, because I think this stuff is awesome, but it's not for everybody. Slightly more real is the Messerschmitt P1011. Not the smoothest name to roll off the tongue, and as you can probably tell, it is very difficult to find proper images of this thing, and this is the best I could do. This was a planned German jet fighter right at the end of the war that was never finished, but at least partially built as you can see. It would be similar in performance to the ME262, whilst retaining slightly better agility as it was more a general fighter rather than an interceptor, something more along the lines of the F-80 shooting star. Now, this plane would be a perfect fit as we have had planes like the Horton Flying Wing already in-game, which was not much further along in its development process. This plane, just to solidify its realness, just for all the people that think, no, this is a paper plane, we can't have those in the game, this plane was directly responsible for the experimental research plane, the Bell X-5, that was used by the US and directly influenced the development of the Swedish Saab J-29 Tunnen or Barrel. Finally, let's talk about some of those late war Japanese designs. Now, once again, these are pushing the limits of fiction, but I would happily welcome paper planes into this game. Now, we have the KI-162 and Friends. This is basically just a Japanese copy or borrowed version of the Heinkel 162 Sal Salamander, which is not a very good aircraft, but Japan needs planes perhaps more than any of the other nations in the game because, well, for the longest of time, it has been somewhat lacking around the rank 4 to rank 5 tier, and this would be a nice addition. As well as this, we have the Mizuno Shinryu, which is a rocket-powered glider designed to intercept bombers. Now, if we have the Bai in-game, as well as the ME-163 Comet, then it would only make sense to give Japan their own domestically used... Uh, well, I say used. It wasn't really used, but um, it was. they were trying, and that is good enough for me to allow it to come into the game. So that just about covers some of the aircraft that I would like to see come to this game. There are plenty more that did not make this list. Anywho, do let me know down in the comments below which ones you would like to see. Have I missed any? Like I said, I will be doing a part two if this video is successful. So have that to look forward to. And well, you know, there are plenty of planes just from this time period alone that I wanted to talk about, including Several more types, especially from the US, which I wanted to talk about, will be featured next time, and these also deserve a spot in the game just as much as any of the other things that we've talked about. Some, as you can see, are more unconventional than others, but all deserving nonetheless. So by all means, if you have, once again, if you have any more suggestions of what aircraft should come to this game, doesn't just have to be from the post-war era, but just in general, then do let me know down in the comments below. And if you like that video, then do hit the like button. It took a lot of effort going into this one, trying to scour the earth for sources, images, videos from all sorts of places. So yes, I do hope you really enjoyed this one. Give it a like if you did. And of course, check out the other content on the channel. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one.